I'm Enrique Cerna, and I'm the executive producer for the uh, World's Fair documentary here at KCTS 9. I grew up in central Washington, just outside of Yakima, in a small town called Wapato. Actually, we lived outside of Wapato. My dad had been a farmer over there. When I was nine years old, my mother, father, and uh, one of my sisters and I got in the family car, and we came to Seattle, and we came to the World's Fair. quite an adventure for us to drive over here and at that time too uh, you didn't have the highways that you have now so it always took quite a long time about six hours and we were like I guess kind of the country bumpkins coming to the big city in a way and I remember we actually came over in a 1954 Ford and I do remember that when we came over to Seattle seeing Space Needle and, it, and at that time it had I believe it was kind of an orange top to it. And like everybody else, we came to the fair, and, and that was the one thing we wanted to do. We wanted to go up in the Space Needle. I also remember kind of feeling a bit scared going up that thing because it was so high, and then you know you get up there and you're looking down over the city. But it was a real unique kind of venue. You had the big buildings, and you had the exhibits, and you had the science pavilion, and you had some of the rides in the fairway area that they had, but also they had those tram things that went over. We got to ride in those, and I remember that was really a lot of fun, and there were just so many people. The thing that stands out in my mind about coming to the World's Fair as a nine-year-old was going on the bubbleator. The guy that was the sort of guide narrator on the bubbleator, but if you ever see any old archival footage of him talking, he kind of talked in this spooky voice. And it was like taking you to the future and thinking of these things that could happen and crisis and nuclear meltdown and all of that stuff. The whole idea was to kind of give you this sense of, um, of the future, but also how the future could also have some consequences to it if you know, somehow we didn't take care of our world. And it's interesting as I've gotten older and I actually got to see the bubble later, later, you know, as kind of, uh, you know, a, a remnant from the fair and it really wasn't that big. It was really kind of small. So it, it just fascinated me that they could crowd you on there so much and it became, actually became one of these really things that was a big talking point for a lot of people that went to the fair. I think a lot of people remember the bubble later. The World's Fair had a big impact on this city. I mean, you still have the, the Space Needle, which is, you know, known globally. It's, it's really, I think, the image and the icon, iconic landmark for Seattle. And I think the fact that there is Seattle Center, which people still relate to, it's, you can tell them, hey, you know, it's downtown near Seattle Center. Or you can tell them that KCTS is right by Seattle Center. So it's a central area. It's kind of the heart of the city. So the fact that it still exists today is still, you know, it's a legacy of the Seattle World's Fair 50 years later. And, and I hope that we keep it because it's uh, something that we need to actually build on. Mm -hmm.